Oh baby, cup check. The Tampa Bay Lightning win game five by a score of three to two over the Colorado Avalanche, forcing a game six in Tampa. But before we talk about this game between the Colorado Avalanche and the Tampa Bay Lightning, since this series is still going, get in on the action with Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook. Bet before the game live in play or one of Sports Interaction's many prop bets. Doing it right since 1997, Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. It's 19 plus Please play responsibly. Let's talk about the game, let's talk about the shenanigans that happened therein, and then let's talk about game six and possibly some more. Despite the fact that this game was ridiculous, it was incredibly high event and incredibly entertaining, I don't think the story was all that complicated though. Because it's two teams, two of the best teams playing so well, but hockey is a game of mistakes. No game in this series illustrated that more than this one. Colorado Avalanche playing very well, playing extremely well, but they give Yen Ruta an unbelievable amount of time in space and he leans into the thing 95 miles an hour plus, it goes through Darcy Kemper and in. Now should Darcy Kemper have had it? Probably, but like it's still a wide open clap bomb from an NHL defenseman. You can't do that. Why would you do that? Listen, I rag on goalies a lot, and maybe Kemper should have had that, but for all the goalies in the chat, like, why won't someone stick up for us? Everyone is talking about how Kemper should have had that, and I didn't really see anyone asking why Jan Ruda was wide open. So, the Lightning have the one nothing lead. The Avs need to tie it, and they do. Big mistake for Tampa, icing. They ice the puck, and they didn't need to. Now, uh... Was the mistake on Tampa for icing it, or was the mistake on the officials for that not being icing? Listen, it's up to the ref's discretion because of hybrid icing. Eh, that was who, who, if you, ooh, if you didn't call that icing, no one would have blamed you. Now I'm trying to remember the fantasy scenario. Like, oh, oh, okay. Like, what if the Lightning scored there? Would the Avs have a reason to be upset? Yeah, maybe. Okay, would they have as much reason to be upset as Tampa since Tampa did get scored? No, no, I don't think so. I would, I would call that the officials making a mistake, but since they called it, it's Tampa making a mistake. They put it into the officials' hands, put it that way. Kale McCarr, pretty good player, sneaks in, he shoots, it hits the bottom, like, blocker part of the glove of Vasilevsky. He does not catch it because that's not the part of the glove that you catch it with. It was super weird, super uncharacteristic. The puck falls to the ice and Valerina Chushkin buries it. And with that, the game is tied 1-1. You get two goalie gifts, one that Kemper maybe should have had and one Vasilevsky maybe should have had. It's 1-1. This is where the game changes at breakneck speed. An unbelievable amount of mistakes. Alex Kalorn takes a penalty on JT Comfort. That's a mistake. Mere seconds later, the puck is in the corner. Here's what's at stake. If Comfort wins the puck battle, the Avalanche get to continue a six on five. They might score on the six on five, Odds are the Lightning at least touch it and the play is dead, leading to a Colorado power play. If Kalorn touches it, the play is dead and it's a Colorado power play. There is no reason for Comfort to touch Kalorn at all. And he does in a way that the officials have to call. That's a penalty, I'm sorry. And all of a sudden it's four on four and then you leave yourself completely vulnerable. If you're the Avs, you don't want four on four with the Tampa Bay Lightning. In my opinion, you're eating them up at five on five and it's wild. We'll go through that more later, but you're eating them up at five on five. You don't want four on four. And also what if something weird happens? Like Kale McCarr and an accidental trip that again, you have to call because his stick is between Palat's legs. He trips him and all of a sudden the Norris winning defenseman is in the penalty box. And it's a four on three power play for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I That is so, so, so much worse than a five on four. A four on three, they had four forwards out there, I think. I'm not gonna look. And now it's worst case scenario because the Avs actually do kill most of it off and at the very end of it when they're the most dog tired, Kucherov with the blast, Corey Perry with the perfect screen in front of Kemper, he couldn't see a thing. Two, one, Tampa. 
what should have been a Colorado power play that could have led to them getting uh, the go-ahead goal, potentially the Stanley Cup winning goal, mere seconds after they draw that penalty, they take one, then they take another, then the puck is in the back of their net, and they're down to one. Enormous series of mistakes. Early in the third, the Avs need a goal to tie it again. Here's how it happens. Kill McCarr puts it on. It was originally Valerie Nachushkin's goal because it kind of looks like Valerie Nachushkin bats the thing in. He doesn't. The puck goes off a Tampa skate in front and then Vasilevsky kicks it into his own net. Two gifts for the Colorado Avalanche in a game where they could have won the cup against a goalie who I'm not convinced is not an alien. His hockey DB should say Neptune, but not here because he kicked a puck into his own net. So now the Avalanche score, it's 2-2 and oh baby, the building's rocking. The Avs tie the game. They're out playing the lightning. It's coming home. It's coming home. The cup is in the building and it's here to stay as long as you know, no one leaves Andre Palat, who has nearly 100 career NHL points in the Stanley Cup playoffs, unless no one leaves Andre Palat wide open. John Cooper said it best. I feel like every postseason, I have the same conversation about Andre Palat. For how long do you have to be underrated for it to be disrespectful? How is this Andre Palat's like coming out party? Like, oh yeah, he's he's finally arri arrived. He's got two cups. This is his third final. He's a pretty good player. And as such, you tell me if you think this is a mistake or not. Ah, look at, ah, he's right there. Ah, ah. Should Kemper have had that? You should have had him! You should have had him way more than Kemper should have! And it's a mistake and a big one and Kemper almost gets it but almost isn't good enough. And the Lightning lead 3-2. And the Avs try. And they try and they try. And they're trying to tie it. And in the dying minutes of the game, there's a there's a whistle. Why is why is there a whistle? There's a penalty. Who took the penalty? Colorado? What, what's the penalty? No. Now the conspiracy theorist in me says, Nazem Kadri was chirping the officials earlier in the game. They deserved it, but he was doing it. Kale McCarr called them a swear word joke. Here's why, by the way, he's completely right. Completely right. The double slash to the hands on what would have been a clear breakaway. Still was, but he was slashing the hands and it would have been better. So he was right. And then after what happened last game, yeah, I think the refs felt really good calling that. That was the only penalty of the third. I, you'll, you'll have to pardon me for having my tinfoil hat on about that. The Lightning don't score on the power play, but the time wasted was worth its weight in gold. The Avalanche with about 40 seconds left with Kemper out of the net. They actually do get surprisingly close but it's Vasilevsky, elimination game, Vasilevsky, post loss, Vasilevsky, near unbeatable, the Lightning, now 20 and two, following a loss, head back to Tampa, and eerie, eerie feeling to the 2019 NBA final for me, I'll explain. Raptors doing real well, real well against a team that has won the championship before, won the championship recently in the Golden State Warriors. But the Raptors up three games to one and game five at home, the Raptors are gonna win it at home. And then they don't. And all game six, all of Raptors nation had the exact same thoughts. If we don't win in game six, we're screwed. Because even though game seven would be at home, oh, the team with championship DNA is a wagon. They're riding, they're hot, they got all the momentum. Do you wanna take on the Tampa Bay Lightning in game seven of the Stanley Cup final? Mm. <laughs> oh. I cringe to think. Now here's the good news if you're an Avalanche fan and that just sent chills down your spine. Uh, the Raptors won. <laughs> I don't know I don't know if you caught that part. The, the Raptors won. They did end up winning game six. The Warriors had to essentially fall apart, like physically fall apart, but the Raptors did win game six and they'll forever have that championship. Would they have won or lost game seven? We'll never know. 
We'll never know. They never got there. The Lightning's methodical attention to detail. The Avalanche temporarily losing their attention to detail. And a dying minutes, too many men on the ice call. Ooh. The hockey gods, they have a, they have a twisted sense of humor. I know that because the Leafs, the, the first round thing, did you, oh, you know, you knew, you knew, you, you knew. I didn't think it was out there. I didn't know if it was public. Now I did get a bunch of questions about the officiating and listen, props to Tampa. Listen, they might've begun the, one of the greatest comebacks in NHL history tonight. I'm not taking anything away from them. However, there were many complaints about the officiating and that was, I d didn't tweet for people to send me questions because most of the questions had to do with officiating. This one on Kale McCarr is by far the most egregious in my opinion. You, you have to call this. It's, it's right in his hands. You have to call this. But no, the refs don't want to get involved. Let him play. Let him play. Lucas Celebre, who is an Avalanche fan, tweeted this out. Does great work with Bar Down. He tweeted this, uh, deserved a winometer from Money Puck, but I want to focus on the chart at the bottom, the expected goals chart. Listen, the Avalanche, who were playing from behind for a lot of this game, they were the better team. They generated more, they were the better team. The refs not having an influence on the game is the refs directly having an influence on the game. When an official or the officials don't call penalties, it helps the team that is taking infractions and not getting punished for it. This is so elementary and it shouldn't need to be explained. And every year in the Stanley Cup final, we have the most experienced and the oldest officials and it's just code for worst. They're the worst ones. They're always the worst ones because they always do that. Isn't it weird? that in game four, no one did anything wrong in the third two. Isn't that so interesting? Isn't that weird? How it just sort of broke that way? It just worked that way? Tampa, hey, you wanted a too many men on the ice call in overtime in game four. Wouldn't it have been better if the whistle, like imagine if you just didn't do your job for at least a third of your shift. Okay, maybe that's a bad example. What if you didn't do your job for a third of your shift and it was nationally televised? Dude, the most experienced officials are often the worst ones. And if you're watching, I'm telling the truth, you're one of the worst ones. And if you're watching and you're one of the retired ones, you're also one of the worst ones, but you're probably worse because yeah. Every year or two, the NHL picks a thing and then they call the thing this year, Cross checks was the thing. And in the regular season, oh, oh, they're calling the cross checks. And in the first round, oh, oh, they're calling the cross checks. And then game five of a series shows up. And then game six, and then game seven. And all of a sudden, whoom, the whistles are swallowed. And then round two happens and they're calling them still a little bit less, but they're calling them. And then game five comes in game six in game seven. And they decrease from five to six to seven. And then in the third round, there's no real illusions. It's not still there. It's there a little bit, but it's not really there. And it's super not there the later we go in the series. And then the Stanley Cup final comes. Third period, Stanley Cup final. From 1917 to 2022. Do whatever you want! As long as you're not throwing the puck over the glass or you have too many men on the ice. Slash whoever you want, wherever you want. In the, in the hands, in the foot, directly between the, in the, in the part that hurts the most. You know, you know, you know. You do whatever you want. Hook, grab, do anything, whatever. It's anarchy out there. And that's the refs just letting them play. No, it's bloody not, and I shouldn't have to explain this like, like I'm explaining it to a child! When you don't call a penalty on the team that's doing the most bad stuff, you're helping them! You're helping them! Oh no, so you want more calls for the... If the better team is doing stuff that causes the other team to take infractions against them, 
That's not the refs helping the better team. It's the refs doing their effing job. It should probably be mentioned that not every mistake or every non-call the officials made uh, was against the Avalanche, or, or should have been something that benefited the Avalanche. The icing call that led to the 2-2 goal, in real time, I didn't think it was icing. And also, it's not like the Avalanche didn't have uncalled infractions as well. Of, of course, there were some both ways. It's just I thought the most game-changing, the most egregious, the non-calls benefited the Lightning. That's how I saw it. And I like to do this for non-Leaf games, so you know I mean it when this inevitably comes up for a Leafs game. NHL officials should every day send flowers and gift baskets to MLB umpires. MLB umpires are the only reason that NHL officials aren't the worst. And there's going to be a debate in the comments like, oh, I don't like the direction that the NFL is going and oh, the NBA is pretty bad. Mm, mm, mm. I think hockey is second worst, it, and unfortunately, it's forty miles of garbage. And then MLB umpires, like no one, no one, no one's close to them. No one's close. Uh, NHL officiating is pretty bad. The big problem with NHL officiating is it seems to be mandated, whereas MLB umpires are just, you know, sort of not fun human beings and bad at their job. NHL officials. League-wide, we can't decide what the rules of hockey are <laughs> and when they apply. Because the rules that apply in the second period might not apply 20 minutes later. And it feels like in the Stanley Cup final, the cutoff for when penalties are called moves up five minutes every game. How many penalties, like, honest to goodness, I don't know who's going to officiate game six or who's scheduled to officiate game seven if it happens. Honest to goodness, how many penalties do you expect in game six total? My bet is maximum four. And I choose four for a very specific reason. Two penalties a piece. There is no way either game six or seven sees one team with more penalties than the other. No way. And if that happens, if it's even up because it has to be even, what did, what did the NHL get rid of Tim Peel for? Just because he said it into a mic? It's... You got rid of him for saying it into a mic, but the thing that he said is still the case! Ah! Anyway, there's my little mini rant. Gabriel Landeskog is not wasting his time with such things. Gabriel Landeskog on the officiating, I'm not going to get into that. That's something they can continue to do, but we're not doing that. <laughs> Shade. Shade. I mean, you're going back to Tampa for game six, so it loses... A little bit of its luster, but a fun quote. And last but not least, I, I'm gonna make this the title of the cup check video. Sam Coast reveals that Andre Palat's nickname is Sneaky P. I don't know how one of the best seventh round picks in NHL history could ever be sneaky because the dude is coming up on 140 Stanley Cup playoff games played. He's 31 and he's pretty good at his job and his name is on the cup twice. He's looking to make it three times. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this cup check video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends game six, the cup is still going to be in the building. It was there last year for a very different reason.